Okay, so moving on from the agricultural revolution and permanent settlements, the next idea that we have to get into is the idea of civilization. So for number four, describe Sumerian culture and civilization by explaining what life was like in the city of Ur. This is toward the end of the chapter. It is something that you definitely want to look at. In terms of government, it's easier to combine the government and the religion and talk about them together because they were very connected in Sumerian culture. The ziggurat, the mountain of God, uh, the big temple was in the center of the city. It was not only the center for religious life, it was also where a lot of the political functions were carried out. Um, the ziggurat was used as a storage point for grain. It was where the priests conducted services. It was right in the middle of town because it is literally the center of their lives. It is something that's very important. So that placement physically means a lot in terms of um, how the civilization functioned. The priests were also heads of the government because, again, we have government and religion very connected at this point. Now, we see a lot of specialization. We see a lot of craftspeople and artisans. As you have craftspeople and artisans producing more stuff, we have the growth of trade. We have the development of a rich merchant class dealing with trade goods. And the city really becomes a center for a lot of transactions and business activity. Now, as you have the growth of trade and the growth of government and the institution of religion really becoming uh, more important in their lives, we have the need to start recording things. So we see the development of written records. And with written records, we have to have people able to do that. That's where the scribes come in. The scribes are going to be the ones who are actually making the clay tablets in Sumer. Now, do we know for sure that cuneiform, the Sumerian form of writing, was the first ever to exist? No, but it's the earliest one that we've found. So we can say that this is the earliest one that's been discovered. Cuneiform looks like little wedge-shaped marks on a clay tablet. Somebody asked me before, if you made a mistake, how would you fix it? Well, when you're imprinting the clay, it's still wet. If you make a mistake, you smudge it out and you do it over again. Um, you're not you know, carving this into a stone block. It's wet clay and then it would be hardened. So they had ways, you know, if you had like a you know, the cuneiform equivalent of a typo, you could fix it. All right, the kinds of stuff they're writing down would be um, tax records. You had other government things being recorded, the amount of grain that you have produced. Um, you have religious leaders keeping track of when festivals and holidays and ceremonies are supposed to be conducted. You have um, early calendars that were developed for things like um, schedules for planting and harvesting. Just on the, on the question of uh, how you make corrections when you're writing cuneiform, that's what you do with the fat end of the stylus. Like they, they found styli from Sumer, and on one end they have the cuneiform wedge that you'd sit there and you'd write cuneiform with. And then they the other end is kind of fat part. and kind of a spatula like thing. So when you mess up your little wedges, you just mash it with that, and then you go back and write more little wedges. Yeah. But, yeah. It's, it's, not, it's not impossible. But again, they're doing that on wet clay. They're not doing that on something that's already been hardened because that would have been a little bit more difficult. But the kinds of things that they're writing down, you know, again, um, calendars, events, tax records, trade records, all of that stuff that you needed to have some... Um, permanent record of they put it down on these clay tablets. How do we know that? Because we found a lot of them. We know that because we have these artifacts and we can tell what kinds of things were being recorded. Because once you bake them, they've turned into stoneware. Yep. Now the next thing that we have is, is well-developed irrigation systems. Um, and again, you got to be able to get the water to the fields. you got to be able to get the water into the town. That's going to be very important, and they're going to get better and better at those kinds of activities as the needs arise. Now, just to bring uh, this back to mind, the five characteristics of a civilization. Specialization of workers, and again, we see that here. Advanced technology, institutions.
institutions such as government, remember an institution is a long-lasting pattern of life in a given society. Institutions tend to be very stable. They don't change very fast. Um, record keeping, and again, this is where we have uh, the beginnings of, of written records going back to about 3000 BC or 3000 BCE, whichever uh, way you, you, uh, you know, would rather think of that. And we also have advanced cities, and the advanced cities are going to become very important centers for trade. 